Mario Kart Tour is no longer getting any new characters, tracks, items, or anything of that matter. While the game is not technically over as it'll rerun its older content, it's no longer getting anything new. Which makes it easy to believe that the reason for that is that we're probably getting a new Mario Kart at some point. Mario Kart 8's DLC is also wrapping up soon, so it all seems to be leading up to that. But honestly, Mario Kart Tour has an absolutely massive catalog that most people aren't aware of. So let's go through everything that was added to the game, because it's really fascinating. The big question to most of us is how many tracks were added? If you count all the variants as individual tracks, then the grand total is 541. That is bonkers, even for a mobile game that's incredibly impressive. But let's really dive into what these tracks are, because there's a lot of interesting details that are hard to find. For starters, we've got all the city tracks. There's 44 different courses, but if you count all the variations, there's technically 176. In case you don't know, most tracks have four different versions. There's the normal version, a reverse version where you drive the opposite direction, a trick version that adds lots of ramps, and a reverse trick version where you'll drive the opposite way with ramps as well. So I'd say in general, they really hit a lot of the major cities. And we've already seen a lot of them in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, like New York City, Tokyo, Paris, London, and the like. As time passed, the tracks themselves tended to get a bit more interesting. Because at first, a lot of these places just look like regular city tracks if you don't recognize the landmarks. But then you've got bangers like Vancouver Velocity and Sydney Sprint that incorporate a lot of their famous landmarks into the tracks themselves to really make them stand out. It's surprising and also infuriating how much effort was put into this mobile game. And I think you'll understand my frustration by the end of this video. But moving on, Nintendo did something most of us didn't expect, and that's creating brand new courses that aren't city related. In fact, there's nine of them, or 36 if you include the variants. All of these are actually really great tracks. In fact, I almost wonder if Nintendo originally intended these to be brand new for a future Mario Kart title. I mean, Yoshi's Island and Squeaky Clean Sprint alone are just incredible. They're filled to the brim with personality, interesting level design, catchy music, it's just got everything that a modern Mario Kart track has to offer. But next we have the Remix Courses, which takes 10 tracks and focuses on a particular obstacle. As an example, Choco Island 1 has a lot of ramps, Rainbow Road 1 has star rings, and so on. With there being 10 Remix Courses, that gives us 40 different variants, and almost all of them are SNES tracks. The only outlier being Bowser's Castle 1, which comes from Super Circuit, so it's kind of hard to even tell it's from a different game. While I think these are decent inclusions, the tracks themselves are still very similar to their normal remakes in the game, so it's kind of hard to remember them compared to the remakes, which, speaking of, let's get to those. So as you'd expect, a lot of the SNES tracks are remade. In fact, 15 out of the 20 were added, which gives us 60 variants. The only ones missing are Bowser Castle 1, Bowser Castle 2, Koopa Beach 1, Mario Circuit 4, and Ghost Valley 3. I don't really have much to comment on because all these courses are so similar, but I guess it is a little strange that they didn't remake all of them. I mean, they were five tracks away and already made assets for all these themes, so what was stopping them? Next, though, is the Nintendo 64 selection. We got 9 out of the 16 tracks, which gives us 36 different variations. Although, technically, we only got 8 N64 tracks because Calamari Desert has two versions. It's a bizarre choice to make a second version of this track, but at least they did something really unique since you can drive through the train tunnel. The missing tracks include Moo Moo Farm, Toad's Turnpike, Wario Stadium, Sherbet Land, Bowser's Castle, DK's Jungle Parkway, Banshee Boardwalk, and Rainbow Road. Most of these missing tracks make sense to not be remade for Mario Kart Tour, but I am a little surprised that Moo Moo Farm and Wario Stadium weren't remade. Moo Moo Farm would have been easier to make considering it's such a basic track, and Wario Stadium is filled with ramps to trick off of. Mario Kart Tour has a huge focus on tricks. In fact, it's a core gameplay element, so I don't see why this couldn't have gotten a remake. In fact, it's the only N64 track that has yet to get a remake from any Mario Kart title. Nintendo just hates this one, I guess. Next, we move on to the GBA courses. This has 14 tracks, which includes 54 variants. Now, if you do the math, you might think there'd be 56 variants, but it isn't because Bowser's Castle 4 doesn't have a trick and reverse trick variation. The missing courses include Shy Guy Beach, Mario Circuit, Cheese Land, Ribbon Road, Broken Pier, and Rainbow Road. Some of these were already remade in Mario Kart 8, like Cheese Land and Ribbon Road, and trying to bring those to tour properly would have been really challenging. But otherwise, I feel like they picked all the good ones. 
Sky Garden, Sunset Wilds, and Yoshi Desert all look fantastic. Bowser's Castle 4 is crazy too. It really goes out of its way to stand out among the other Bowser castles. Adding the staircase and the big marble rock things were a great touch. In fact, it almost feels like Mario Kart 8 levels of effort, which again is all the more frustrating that so many of these remakes are trapped on the phone. Then we've got the GameCube. Seven tracks were remade, which gives us 28 variants. The missing tracks include Luigi's Circuit, Peach Beach, Dry Dry Desert, Mario Circuit, Sherbet Land, Mushroom City, Wario Coliseum, Bowser's Castle, and Rainbow Road. Again, a lot of these aren't that surprising to see dismissed. Remaking Luigi's Circuit and Mario Circuit would be pretty redundant considering how many of those types of tracks are already remade. Although I am a bit sad we never got Wario Coliseum or Rainbow Road. Again, Wario Coliseum would have been great for tricking, and I just really love GameCube's Rainbow Road. The Bowser's Castle is also very solid, but at the same time, we got a ton of Bowser Castle tracks in here already. At least they included most of the solid choices though. DK Mountain, Yoshi Circuit, Waluigi Stadium, all of those are amazing tracks and were recreated fairly well. Mushroom Bridge looks stunning too, so I can't say I'm too disappointed with the selection. It's just too bad that we can't play all these tracks whenever we want to, but are instead limited to playing a random handful every couple of weeks. Well, isn't that just a great old time? Next are the DS courses, which gave us 7 remakes or 28 variants. The missing ones include Figure 8 Circuit, Yoshi Falls, Cheap Cheap Beach, Desert Hills, Delfino Square, Tick Tock Clock, Wario Stadium, Bowser Castle, and Rainbow Road. Honestly, most of the missing DS tracks are pretty forgettable and boring. The only one I really wish was included was Delfino Square, but the selection they remade was basically the best of the bunch. You can't really go wrong with Waluigi Pinball, Airship Fortress, Luigi's Mansion, and the like. Now surprisingly, 9 Wii tracks got a remake, which gives us 36 different variants. The missing ones are Luigi's Circuit, Moo Moo Meadows, Toad's Factory, Mario Circuit, Wario's Goldmine, Grumble Volcano, and Bowser's Castle. I'm kind of shocked that they remade more than half of the Wii tracks since at this point in time, they really started to become more and more intricate. Coconut Mall, Maple Treeway, Rainbow Road, Koopa Cape, all of these are classics and have a lot of moving parts. I guess the reasoning for adding this many Wii tracks is, well, nostalgia, and because there's literally too many good ones to pick from. And last but not least are the 3DS tracks, which actually gave us the most remakes out of all the Mario Kart games. There's 12 different courses and 47 variants. And no, it's not 48 variants, because Rock Rock Mountain never got a reverse track variation. The missing tracks are Woohoo Loop, Music Park, Maka Woohoo, and DK Jungle. I kind of wish either Woohoo Loop or Maka Woohoo was included as well as Music Park, but the track selection is otherwise stellar. It also makes sense that they remake the most of these particular tracks because the graphic style is very similar to Mario Kart 7. I'm just glad they added Mario Kart 7's Rainbow Road, since that's always been my favorite of the bunch. And that's a deeper look into the Mario Kart Tour tracks. And uh, no, there's not a single one for Mario Kart 8, although that's not really that surprising. Mario Kart 8 obviously looks way better graphically, and most of the tracks have the anti-gravity gimmick, which isn't in Mario Kart Tour. Although, I guess if they really wanted, they could have added a couple basic ones, like Mario Kart Stadium or Bone Dry Dunes, perhaps? Either way, it's impressive how many courses were made. A lot of the city tracks have multiple versions, but they all have different track designs, so I'd still count them as unique, technically speaking. But that's not all, because we're only just getting started. This video is sponsored by Vitcher. These aren't just some ordinary glasses. These are the world's first XR glasses that were designed for gaming consoles, including the Nintendo Switch. What they do is display a pixel-free 1080p 60fps screen right in front of you with a high color fidelity. It's hard to describe what these are like without actually wearing them, but just imagine looking at a big TV that's right in front of you wherever you are. The image is being projected through the glasses themselves. It's really impressive technology. You can also adjust the background darkness without affecting the brightness on the screen. There's a 3DOF feature that allows allows the screen to float in the air as you turn your head. You can also adjust the myopia diopter, which means for someone like me, I can see the image perfectly without needing to wear my glasses. The audio is also stunning and comes right from the glasses and is privacy partnered with Harman. You can play co-op in the go with an extra pair of glasses. It has a built-in 3D mode and this mobile deck offers extra battery life. So grab your dock pack today and get 10% off with my code BANDY. The link is in the description and pinned comment. And thanks again to Veitcher for sponsoring this video. But coming back to Mario Kart Tour, there aren't just regular tracks to play. As you'd expect, there's a small selection of battle courses, which only makes sense since every Mario Kart game has had that mode as well. However, for Mario Kart Tour, only five battle courses were added. 
we got two new ones, New York Minute B and Paris Promenade B, as well as three retros, which are GBA Battle Course 1, GCN Cookie Land, and DS Twilight House. The new tracks are just... okay. New York Minute B and Paris Promenade B remind me a little bit of the original Mario Kart 8 battle tracks where you just drive around the whole track and never see anybody, although at least with these, the tracks themselves are more restricted. Something interesting to point out though is that the battle mode doesn't always end at the time limit. Unfortunately, it is still included, but if you take out all the racers before the time is up, then the battle just ends right there. I really hope that the next Mario Kart game gives us some sort of toggle to turn on and off the time limit because I've never been a fan of it. I think Nintendo's mindset here is that the battle mode would drag on for too long without a timer, but that's what makes it so exhilarating in the first place. If you and one other player are down to your last balloon, it adds this sense of pressure and suspense to survive and end up on top. Also, just to throw this out there, I'd personally love to have seen N64's Battle 4, considering it's the best battle track, but at least there's a few decent ones here. But I think that's enough about tracks. Let's move on to the characters. It is genuinely insane how many characters were added, because if you include the variants, our grand total is 265. Yes, over 200 freaking Mario Kart characters. While I know that sounds bonkers, let's just think about the Mario franchise in general. Are there even 200-something Mario characters to begin with? If you include the RPGs, then, I mean, maybe. But what Mario Kart Tour did here was include a ton of variants, and I mean a ton of them. I went through every single character and tallied up how many are technically unique, and that led me to finding out there's really only 47 characters. Now, I'm not going to go over all the characters in the game, but I do find it fascinating how many new costumes were created. Just looking at Mario as an example, he has a total of 29 variants. A lot of these were themed around specific holidays or tracks, which I think is really damn neat. Then let's look at Peach. She's got 12 variants, Luigi has 14, Toad has 15, and I think you get the point of what they were going for. The character with the most variants, however, is not even a Mario character. It's just me costumes, which, you know, were also included in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe if you had the amiibo to unlock them, but in Mario Kart Tour, there's a total of 64 costumes, which is actually double what Mario Kart 8 Deluxe had, which is 32 costumes, and I'm including the color variations, which don't really count as unique suits. There's also quite a few gold characters. In fact, there's 14 different gold versions. Because I guess gold equals shiny and good? I don't know, why do people like gold so much, huh? But with that said, there's still a very strong selection of unique characters. We got King Boo, Diddy Kong, Funky Kong, Poochie, King bob -um, and Charge and Chuck, just to name a few. At this point, I'm surprised that they still haven't added a Goomba. Like, you might as well. I'm really curious if Nintendo is going to end up adding all these variations in the next Mario Kart, because that is a lot of characters. It'd be really awesome if they did do this, and considering they've created all these models and could just port them over with nicer textures and animations, why not, right? Just think about how incredible it'd be to start the roster off with the eight original characters, and then you constantly unlock new ones as you play, so similar to Smash Bros. Ultimate. But characters are not the only highlight worth bringing up. We actually have quite a few items that are brand new. In fact, 11 of them have never been seen before. These include the Double bob -ums, Ice Flower, Bubble, Banana Barrels, Mushroom Cannon, Coin Box, Dash Ring, bob -um Cannon, Giga bob -um, Super Bell, and Capsule. Some of these items are just variations of what we've already seen before, while some of them are completely unique. I could see a large majority of these returning to the new Mario Kart, especially the Coin Box and Dash Ring. Those would fit in perfectly with a normal Mario Kart title, and same with the Ice Flower and Bubble. Some of the weird ones though, like the Mushroom Cannon and Banana Barrels could also make a return, but they feel Feel like they mostly just belong to Mario Kart Tour, and that's it. It's also worth mentioning that the hammer is technically not a new item, as it's been included in every Mario Kart arcade game, although they do technically function differently, so it's kind of a bit of both. This leads us to having 38 items in total, which is the most out of every Mario Kart game. And not only that, but you can actually upgrade your items to be slightly better over time. For a few examples for how this was done, the Banana Barrel upgrade adds a chance of firing a giant banana, the Lucky 7 is more likely to show up, the Dash Ring adds extra rings in front of you, and so on. I absolutely love this mechanic, but I hate that it's stuck on a phone game that forces you to painfully grind this out. And all the characters have special items too, which was also a great thing to bring back from Double Dash. 
All of this is just more features that I hope are brought to the next Mario Kart. It'd be awesome to be able to upgrade your items even for just a little bit for online play. It's also worth mentioning what the Super Bell and Capsule are since they have fairly interesting functions. The Super Bell rings a few times, knocking away players near you. So it's kind of like the Super Horn, but I guess a bit more useful. And then the Capsule is very similar to shells, except that when thrown, they bounce towards other players like it's a fireball. But then we have the carts and gliders, and my god did they go hard on these too. There's a total of 319 carts and 225 gliders. Now keep in mind, there are a lot of duplicates, just like with the drivers, but not as many as you'd expect. In fact, quite a lot of the carts are pulled from previous Mario Kart titles. This even includes Mario Kart 8, which is kind of funny considering there wasn't a single Mario Kart track and tour. There's one cart from Super Mario Kart, 11 from Double Dash, 9 from DS, 7 from Wii, 11 from 3DS, and 14 from Mario Kart 8. So that leaves us with 266 unique carts made for tour. Well, <laughs> kind of. A handful of these are just reskins from previous Mario Kart titles, or they're brand new carts made for tour. While every cart technically has its own distinct stats, visually, a lot of them have the same build. Turbo Yoshi originated from Double Dash and has 9 variations with all different colors. There's 39 gold versions of carts, 8 versions of the Dasher Mark II, and so on. A lot of these carts only have 3 or 4 different versions, so there's actually quite a lot of variety. I do want to highlight a few of the more interesting designs, like the Jet Cruiser as an example. It's literally just a cruiser shrunk down into a cart size, and it looks so goofy. Fast Frank is just a big ol' hot dog, Jumbo Jetter is a chunk of an airplane, Kimmick Zoom Broom is his broom, and you get the point. The gliders, on the other hand, don't pull from the older titles as much, and mostly because, uh, well, they can't. Since they've only existed since Mario Kart 7, there's only two games to pick from. Mario Kart Tour added six gliders from Mario Kart 7 and four from Mario Kart 8, which leaves us with 215 new ones. And the selection here is slightly more unique than the carts. Now, of course, there are lots of variations as you'd expect. There's 29 gold gliders, 12 Hanafuda, and once again, a lot of the gliders have three or four different versions. Some of my favorites, though, have to be the mustaches. I mean, come on, a Mario mustache as the glider? That's so stupid that I can't help but love it. Then you've got the hat balloons, which in a weird way are kind of foreshadowing Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and that's because there's a badge where you can float with your hat, and this is kind of the same idea. Then you've also got Yoshi's Cookies, it's a bunch of tiles from the NES game and it's very cute. There's also this Flyberry book, which is literally just a book. You know what, maybe it's the book squirm book from Mario Party 4, but uh, I'm not gonna hold my theory on that one. Let's see, we've also got a pretzel, a panini, some candles, a pile of leaves, a Super Mario Kart themed glider, and so many more beyond that. So as you can see, a ridiculous amount of content was added to Mario Kart Tour. And it's a real shame that it's impossible to access most of this stuff without playing the game religiously for four years, or without spending money to get the rare characters slash cart slash gliders. So, here's to hoping that the next Mario Kart includes some of this stuff. Or all of it. I highly doubt they'll include all of it. But anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back soon.